Hello everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Mother Bench. Welcome back now, part 4A, I'm calling this. I'm going to keep calling it 4A, B, C, D until we get this air scale cockpit done. I've done quite a bit of work off camera, which I'm going to show you now. I've changed a couple of things around, a couple of tips and a couple of discoveries that I've made while I've been searching around. First things first, um, if you remember I made a video which was part 3 all about positioning the instrument panel. I have been looking and looking, I've spent hours and hours on the computer and I've found a photograph of an aircraft being restored and there's a picture looking into the side of the aircraft and basically I'll put the picture up now and you can see that you've got a, a nice straight on picture and you've got there you can see the frame around the window on the side of the cockpit and you can see if you look to the right you can see the angled panel the switch panel coming up meeting a panel which then goes vertical which becomes the instrument panel and then you've got the little sort of panel that goes in the corner with the switches sits in front of that on that flange just in front of it right so we have finally got something that proves the position of the instrument panel now a load of you have been asking me about the combing um in fact it was just repeats of the same question over and over again um I am sure the combing in the Hong Kong models kit is OK, because looking at pictures and looking at, you know, comparing it to the drawings that we've got, which I don't trust at all. Um, if it's way out to a drawing, you sort of it makes you think, you know, you've got to go and look. But if it matches a drawing, you know, at least, you know, you're somewhere now. Basically, the, the thing is with this combing it meets you, you see the photograph i just showed you this area here it comes down and that area there meets the corner of the window so basically you've got your canopy can run here and then there's a square open window here or a rectangular square open a rectangular window there and that pillar is there so we know that that point is correct and then when we look up at the top of it you can see it angles forward and that is what it does the only thing i think that could be wrong when you look at this is the problem with this aircraft you look at some photos and you'll see that this has kind of got a dome in the middle, almost as if it's sort of come along and it's got like a crown on it. It goes up in the middle and then down. Sort of instead of being like this, it's like that. So I, I can't work out which version that is, but we must be very careful because it would appear, as I mentioned in part four, a lot of the photographs are from Soviet manuals. I, I was looking at something earlier on and I noticed the website, the address, it was it was. The, the website address was something something in dot ru so it was obviously a russian a russian website that had this information so it probably came from a russian manual or pictures of a russian aircraft or whatever so um yeah be very very careful i'm not sure if they were the same but uh so that's that so that's that one put to bed so basically what that picture shows us i'm going to put another photo up with dimensions in a minute um and because I can see square on now, looking straight down like that, I can see this window opening here. And if I take a rule and I measure this window opening, that gives me approximately 16. We're going approximately because we're not going to go like 0.3 and all that. It's approximately 16 millimeters to the middle of those frames there. OK, so measuring to the middle of those frames that surround that clear window is 16 millimeters. Now, I know that the edge of the cowling comes to the middle of that frame there. So if take some vertical lines and you scale that to 16 millimeters and then you come forward to the front, the, the edge of where the instrument panel goes, it works out about 11 millimeters. I think it was like 79 percent of it or something. So basically, if you remember, I've moved the instrument panel from here to sort of it's floating around this this little pin here that I'm pointing at now Let's get a pointer that little lug there that is what the little tiny panel that sits in the corner sits on um, and basically the instrument panel is sort of doddering behind and in front of that so basically we want 11 millimeters from the edge of that comb in back to there and you can see we've got about 11 and a half millimeters so moving that instrument panel back about three and a half mil has got it in the correct position so a lot of people have been saying about moving it back six mil too much. And that's been proven by that photograph. As you can see, if we move back six mil, we'll be right back under here. If you move it back to there, that's correct. And then there's that hole for the gun sight. 
and that's another thing a lot of the aircraft didn't have gun sights so I, I, I don't know I mean a lot of them are probably glass nose aircraft that's why they got the photographs uh, well, they've got the photographs of so I'm happy with the position that instrument panel comes in if you remember in the kit it's actually sitting here okay and I've got mine sitting here so I've just moved it forward uh, roughly three millimeters three and a half millimeters you can see the difference there if I put a rule in there you can see it's about three and a half millimeters so there we are so I'm happy with that and we've now got some actual evidence to prove it and it's not there's no funny angles or any funny cameras curving or whatever it's dead straight you can see it there it's absolute proof there's no denying that is where the instrument panel goes so I'm happy we got that right so now you can do the same on yours um, okay so I have gone on and primed remember I soldered all these parts together I've gone on and primed them so this is the actual frame that sits up under the canopy I've got the clear sprue here as you saw earlier so that's just going to basically sit up on there like so come on do you know I did this off camera and it literally just fell on there it's such a good fit there we are so that's going to fit up on there so we get this lovely detail along the edge here instead of just a plastic edge and then we've got this thin metal panel rather than the big chunky plastic bit so lovely that's all very nice indeed and that all fits up in there and you know obviously it's going to be painted on the top painted inside so it'll be all green so that's that one done um if you remember i put some black ca glue around to fill these gaps in here give that a quick coat of primer now that's looking great we've got lots of we're gonna have some trouble putting the levers in there because we've got to have two in each slot so uh, we'll get there somehow but we'll, we'll get that done now the seat um i almost scrapped this seat because I wasn't sure about the back being flat and then seeing those photos there it has got a very gentle curve and in a minute I'll show you how I did it and this little panel in here is an absolute nightmare to get it square that way and that way so when you look down on the seat is square and when you look straight ahead on the seat is square but I think we got there in the end you can see it's uh, it's in there nice and square now so that's lovely and I have put you can see a very gentle curve on the back of the seat and all I did was literally I've glued these on here with super glue these are the rear supports basically if you put them on with the outer edges pretty much level with the outer edge of the seat you're, you're right and then just get your finger and push I just push down in the middle and I've got a gentle curve now you can see there that what I've done there if I, if I give it a bit of a harder push you can see I've got a kind of a bit of a sort of rather than being a gentle curve so all I did there was got the back of the tweezers and just pushed against my finger just to remove that. So that's come out really nice, really happy with that. So we'll definitely be using that seat now. We'll get some belts draped over that. It's going to look great. I almost used this one. I don't like the kit seat. It's just too big. Um, but I almost used this one, but then I don't want to do an early G. I want to do a later G. So, um, and I don't know when the crossover point is, but there aren't many photographs of... of a20s with these seats in so I don't know it's funny that seats cause so much argument it's like some say that Lancaster has never had a, a seat cushion in the base the pilot always sat on his um, parachute that's not the case it's not the case the engineers first responsibility in an emergency in a Lancaster was to grab the pilot's um, parachute from behind his seat and give it to him because they, they, were, they were flying for so long the pilots were getting all sorts of issues sitting on that parachute for that length of time. So um, they used to have the parachute. In fact, you can even see it in one of the pictures in Richard Alexander's book. You can see the, pal the parachute strapped to the back of the pilot's seat armour. So there you go. Um, so yeah, it causes lots of arguments, lots of controversy and everything. And I'm sure it's going to cause loads and loads of comments now. But uh, there we go. I've chosen on my colour for the cockpit. Um, that was the AK real colour, which I think is it's nice, but I think it's just a touch too light in reality. It does look nice. Um, that's the SMS, which is horrible. That's a horrible colour. Um, it's not right at all. That's H58, which for me is the go-to interior green. But I want to do this one just a little bit lighter because it's so deep and enclosed in there. So this is my Tamiya mix. 
and you can see here I lightened it back a bit and that was what I sprayed it with before I've lightened it back a bit more now with a drop of yellow and I've put that next to the H58 so you can see there it is slightly lighter than the H58 so I'm happy with that so that's my own Tamiya mix so that is probably um, six or seven parts XF4 to one part X1 and then one part X3 sorry six or seven parts XF4 say seven parts XF4 one part XF1 and then one part XF3 and that's given me that color which I think is brilliant um, I would just go and buy some more H58 because I'm nearly out but the trouble is I don't want to pay £2.50 for a bottle of paint and then £3.50 bloody postage is crazy so I'll wait till I'm at a show or something and I'll get some there um, so there we are the other thing I've done um, but since I've done it, I've never liked the way that these handles that I fitted were right up against the side of the seat. It's not right. So I think what's happened here, you've got this panel here behind the seat. And what they tell you to do in the Edward instructions, is, see the edge of this piece of white strip on it? There's a panel there behind the seat. And Edward tell you to put these up against the edge of that, and it's too close. So what I've done is added a strip. So I've just pushed those knobs out a bit, and it makes them further away from the seat. And it's just a lot more... You can see now it's a lot more practical to have those knobs next to the seat like that rather than right up against it. And you'll also see I've also changed and added in those three positions there, there and there. I've added the photo etch because they are actually a flat blade. They're not an arm. They're not a rod. And then we've put a ball on the end to make the end into a ball rather than just a flat disc. And on this one here, it's actually that way around. It's actually, so it comes, it can only go one way. It's actually like a square lever. So I fitted it 90 degrees. So you can see on the top there, it's flat. So it's quite wide. Again, we've got the ball on there. I've left the bottom ones as a, as a, um, just round rods because at the end of the day, they're right down the bottom. You're already going to, I mean, when the seat's in there, you're not really even going to hardly see them, especially with the belt and everything in the place. In fact, they're going to get in the way of the belt on there. I might have to move them over as well. We shall see. Um, so there we go, guys. So that's what I've been up to. I've also painted this black um, and then put my finger in it before it's quite dried. But the only reason this is painted gloss black is to accept the decal. It's the only reason. And then I've painted everything else here that's going to have a decal on it. I've painted gloss black. I've only painted the main instrument panel gloss black because everything else is black. So I want it to match. What I have to do is knock them back with a with a flat coat after the decals are on them. I'll do the same with that one. I've also cut out the acetate. Um, you can just see it here, if you can see it in there or not. But it's in there. I've cut it out and I've made it the full size of this panel because remember that panel sits slightly proud, doesn't it? Or no, this one sits proud, doesn't it? Um, yeah. But um, the, the other issue, we've got gauges right up to that edge, or gauges right up to that edge, and gauges right up to this edge. So you're not getting a lot of room. So it's better to just have it a complete coverage. And then what we'll do, we'll clamp it in place, and we'll run a bead of super glue around. And what we'll actually do is like, build a mound of super glue. So we've got a, you've got your two sheets of photo etch with the acetate in the middle, and we'll build like a mound. So it's almost like a cap that's going to hold it all together. Because the problem is super glue doesn't stick that well to acetate. So, um, don't want to just delaminate in one day, do we? So um, that's how far we've got, and that's the work I've done. So I just wanted to introduce this video with those few words to show you how confident I am about the instrument panel position, uh, the measurements I've done, the, the 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 proof I've got behind it, and also what I've done with the air scale set. So I'll come back. It's probably going to be tomorrow for me, but it's going to be a few seconds for you because I want to leave this paint plenty of time to dry because those decals are very thin and you do not want to be putting them down on even the slightest bit of sticky paint. They'll just they'll be down and you'll, you'll ruin them. So um, we need to make sure we've got plenty of floatability space in there. So there we go. I will probably take them off of here before I put the decals on um, and I'll clean up the edges. I don't worry about having shiny edges because we sand the edges to blend it all anyway and then put the super glue in. So um, I will see you in a few seconds. Right, so here we are next day now. Moving forward, um, looking in the instructions, um, basically what it's telling us to do 
is use part number one, which is this part here, as a template to cut out our acetate. We've done that, but we've only cut it down the side here. Um, because this area here where my finger is now is, has no instruments on it so it doesn't need the acetate so basically I've just cut it around that panel there which is number three um, and then it says add the main instrument panel decal three to backplate part one so it's asking us to add this main decal here to this part here and you can see what I've done because we have a metal piece going to be glued on here I started to remove the paint then I realized We've got a decal to go on. So I think what I'm going to do is give this another coat of gloss. Um, make sure it's all nice and shiny for the decal to go down. And then, and also because I've taken it off and cleaned up all the edges. I mean, it could be advisory. Maybe remove them from the fret before you paint them. Um, the other thing I've discovered, <clears throat> certainly like with these panels here, when I've removed them from the fret, they've curled because of their having material removed from one side. And then when I've straightened them out, I've damaged the paint so probably best in hindsight going forward get them off the fret before you paint them uh, get them off the fret get them nice and flat get them primed get them painted um, and then it's telling us to sort of assemble up everything and then glue it to the instrument panel so here's where you can sort of make your own choice so you could come along and paint all this green oh the other thing you remember I've sanded this if you remember this area here on the instrument panel is raised so I've sanded it flat because we've got the one panel going on so um, just sanded it all flat to make sure we get good adhesion so basically you've got the choice you could either put that onto here add the decal add the acetate and then add the sheet on top your, your actual instrument panel part on top or you can build it up and then glue it on as an assembly entirely up to you it's the same down here is telling us to glue these two pieces together then apply the decal then fit it to the model I think what I'm going to be tempted to do here is I think I'll apply the decal after I fit it to the model and then I can drill all the holes and everything before I put the decal on um, here the same um, you know apply the decal then fit the panels so I think the next step for me is to get some painting done so get all this stuff painted gloss black again ready for the decals um, basically because A, I've sanded it there, and B, because I've managed to chip the paintwork. And you can see on this one here, I can see now it's not flat. It still needs some flattening out. So um, I'll do some more work on that one in a second. Um, as I say, the, the thing is, nickel, nickel steel is harder than brass. So therefore probably has more stress, and therefore will when it's etched it will curl. But it's easy to flatten out. I mean, these two here are lovely and flat now. Um, so we've got to decide the way we're going to go about it but the first thing we need to do is get some green paint on here whatever we do because I don't want to be masking up over decals and stuff um, and I've got all these here across the bench you can see we've got dials and knobs we've got toggle switches dials and knobs two cockpit handles knobs World War two and missile switch covers now I did remember, if you remember when I did the Edward set I check the instructions before I start hacking stuff off because sometimes what Peter will do is tell you to reuse some of the plastic parts. And sure enough, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. here we are. Place decal out onto part six and decal seven onto part seven to complete the right hand switch panel. That's over here. Okay. Uh, reuse the four oblong molded blocks from the kit switch panel. So. Beware, you need to read right through the instructions before you do any cutting. But luckily, I have these. These are the missile switch covers from Anise. And basically, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but they are basically uh, covered toggle switches. And I don't know if you can see them there. We've got them in 32nd and 48th. So we just have four of them lined up. And I'm um, not quite sure how I'm going to go about having them all perfectly lined up yet. We may have to put them on with white glue. We shall see. We've got the little tiny 48th ones there as well. We probably will use the 32nd. Um, so, yes, we've got all that to go on. Um, because, as you know, we've got a lot of buttons up around here that are missing. Well, we can use <clears throat> those for that. We've also got some nice buttons in there by the look of it. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got knobs, World War II. Down the right-hand side of the cockpit, we've got some big thumb wheels. And uh, I think they'll be good for that. So... Uh, we shall see. Um, we've also got actually here 
I'm just looking. We have some on the side of the throttle quadrant. There are two lumps sticking out. Come here, throttle quadrant. I've only just noticed this. There are two lumps sticking out. You can see them there. One, two, just in front of my finger. They are actually knobs. And that one there looks very much like it. So we've got the smaller ones there. We've also got 48 scale ones. So a couple of those are going to be really suitable to replace those knobs. Anything we can do to just sort of add more edges and stuff. It just makes it all look very, very busy. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and by the way, I did actually move that panel out. That little panel down there. I moved it out that with the two uh, levers on it. I moved it out to get it away from the seat belt mount. So there we are. Right. So um, next thing I'm going to do is glue these two together before I do any more painting. Because I know that when I start moving things around and bending it and stuff, I'm just going to crack the paint. So I want to get these two panels glued together. And we've got these holes in here, which are, by the way, these holes are 0.5, um, roughly 0.5 generally. And all of these um, on here, you've got the, you can see these are the toggle switches. You can see them there. Tiny little toggle switches. And the actual stem on the back is sort of between 0.33 and 0.38 sort of thing. Obviously, it's not precise because it's not a precise part of the, of the uh, component. But we can just cut them off and leave the pin and just put them in. And what we'll do is we'll paint them, get a wash on them, do all that before we actually... Um, before we put them in so that'll be the sort of last thing to go in so uh yeah looking forward to using them i'm going to actually put them away before we go any further because if i put something down on top i will destroy half of them okay sorry i had a visitor there so um yeah trying to sort of just edit this in really so um what i've decided to do is glue a piece of tissue paper to my finger so what i've basically decided to do is i think i already mentioned this i'm going to spray all this black again but before i do i'm going to glue these two together so the, this is the left hand switch panel, um, that's upside down actually. This is the left hand switch panel, it's going to sit on the left hand side of the instrument panel here, just like that, and it's going to have, it's going to be sat like that, it's going to have a decal put on the front of it, and it's going to, just like that, it's going to have a decal put on the front of it, and it's going to have a, um, uh, the Anise toggle switches in there, um, and then we'll try and manipulate them. I don't know if you can, I'll have to do an experiment. I'm not sure if you can manipulate them to have them look on and off. So um, that's what we're going to do. So uh, how are we going to get this glued together and make sure these holes line up? Well, what I do is take a drill. And what I do is find the hole size. And it's roughly 0.5. Okay, so we can put that drill in there. Put that through the corresponding hole. And now we have those panels perfectly lined up with those holes aligned and then I can take another 0.5 drill I can use that's three four five I can use one of these horrible things and put that through there okay so it's not 0.5 it's 0.4 probably I think these are 0.45 so I use try that Or are they 0.35? I can't remember if they were 3, 3, 5 or 4, 5. The 0 0.5 won't go through on certain ones. So it's going to have to go, go. It's gone through there now. So what we can do is use these drills to align everything. In fact, I'm going to use one of these as well. There we go. So we can use those drills to align everything. And we can just hold those together like that like so okay so they're sat on there and then we can put a drop of a drop of the thin super glue on the edge and let it wick in put some on that edge as well let the capillary attraction pull it in and then with a pair of tweezers just give it a little squeeze and we should be good to go So that's that end done. I'm going to take one of my modified clothes pegs. Just hold it together just like so. Take the drills out. 
and there we go I'm just looking we don't have perfect alignment there so I'm going to take this drill here and see if I can get it to go through yes I can just going to put some glue along that edge give that a little squeeze And now those two panels are actually tacked together. So when we spray those now, we'll get around the edges as well. The other thing I'm looking at here, this panel on mine appears to be, no, it is okay. I thought it appeared to be slightly wider, probably because I've sanded the side. So what I might do is add a piece of plastic card to the outside just to get a, give it a bit of a boundary so it doesn't look like it's just stuck on. It kind of looks like it's, because what I don't want is the edges overhanging. And that is kind of yeah I'm gonna have I'm gonna add a 10 type piece of plastic card to each outside just to fatten it up a bit because I've obviously sanded away material on the outside and I don't want this to be overhanging that'll look awful so I'm gonna do that um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some more glue around this one I'm just going to grab some more glue and run it around and let it capillary in. Do the same on this side. And then with a cotton bud, which I really don't like using on these because the hairs come out, they catch on all the raised detail and then get stuck under your paint. So it's good to have a little magnifier or something like this. This is like a 10 to 1. Um, and have a look at the parts before you paint them and if you've got little tiny fibers stuck in the you won't see them in the natural state but as soon as they're in your paint you'll see them and I can look through there now and I can see you can look at that there now I don't know if you can see it but there is a hair in the middle and there is a hair hanging off the end so we'll get rid of them and that's the trouble with using cotton buds on photo etch parts um, so that's that so that's nice and flat that's laminated together job done good to go so um just basically using drills to align everything and then when we mount it when we mount this onto the plastic part here obviously after the glue's dried and everything we'll go through and drill through and what I may do is actually leave the decal until we've got all this glue together and everything um, we shall see I'm still sort of thinking about it. I mean it's easy you could easily decal this up now and have it all done and everything ready and then when you come to glue it on if you get a bit of glue on the edge you're knackered uh, because you've got a decal and you've only got one decal if I get glue on the edge because the trouble is super glue will remove this paint so if I get glue on the edge before I put a decal on and I remove the paint I can easily just touch it up whereas you can't necessarily touch up a decal really especially when you look at these with all that writing on there you don't want to be ruining that do you so um i'm going to carry on with some painting and i'll see you when that's done all right so many hours have gone by um done quite a bit of work obviously this is all painted green i had a bloody hair in it there so i think i might have to rub that out and repaint it we shall see um and this panel's done i did add those bits of plastic card to the side i just added two bits of ten thou plastic card to the sides just to fatten it up a bit so now that when this uh, where is it this one over here when this panel goes on as you can see it will just it will fit nicer than just hanging over the edge now it, it just fits a lot nicer so that looks better um, I've built up the th throttle quadrant now this has been quite a bit of work uh, let me just go through what I've done in case you want to do the same where these two lumps stick out I drilled them out and I fitted two pieces of 0.8 by 0.4 brass tube in there so 0.8 OD, 0.5 bore, and then drill them out 0.5. Um, so they're just on there to, to represent those lumps of plastic. And then what we'll do is we'll grab a couple of these wheels in here. These are Nice wheels. Um, and I think I'm going to use that one there. And we're just going to cut those off and literally pop them in. But we're going to paint them first and then put them in afterwards when it's all done. Um, I've used one already in that centre where I had that big centre hole. I've used one in there to cover up that centre hole. As you can see, I've put all the levers in. These are from the Airscale set. 
Um, and also what I've done is added, I don't know if you can see in there, there's a strip at the middle. It's not it's, it's not on the fret for the air scale. Um, there's actually a strip between the levers. So I've, I've put three very thin strips of photo etch just from my scrap bin. Um, and a photo etch scrap box, I say. And uh, so that sort of improves the look of that area there. So all in all, the throttle, the throttle assembly is looking lovely. I've absolutely been driving myself crazy trying to look for re references because in the air scale set, uh, where is the fret? Oh, it's in the middle of there. But they give you, um, in the air scale set, they give you the these levers here, the shorter ones, they have like a square end on them. And, and if you look at pictures of the one at the National whatever Air Museum, I think it is in America, pictures of the cockpit, it has these rectangular lumps which have a sort of bit sticking out. Um, I've done some research and I found that is actually a post-war aircraft. So I'm going to give up looking for accuracy. I mean, the, the position of the instrument panel was one thing, but looking for accurate photographs and, you know, there's so many different aircraft in so many different countries. And the ones that seem to be around now were all post-war aircraft. So we're looking at old black and white photos that look like that. But that might be a really early A20A or C or I don't know. I'm just going to go for it and make these uh, knobs all round. Well, they're not round. They're actually semicircular. They, they sort of add, add a dollop on this side and a dollop on that side. So like a sort of half circle that meets in the middle. Almost like getting a pool ball and cutting it in half and sticking it on either side. So that's that. You can see the seat is looking lovely. With a coat of paint on it, it's all um, looking very nice. The option to have the seat black, uh, but I'd rather have it green. I didn't like the look of it black. It's the same with the Hellcat that I'm building. The cop, the upper half of the cockpit of that should be black, but I just don't like the look of it, so I've stayed with green. Um, I've repainted all the instrument panels and everything. I've used MRP black primer, so you can see the finish on there. It's absolutely gorgeous. The finish you get with the MRP, um, and then what I've done, rather than paint it gloss. Anything that's going to have decals on, I've gone over with the MRP gloss varnish. So we can leave those now to dry and um, and then we'll, uh, we'll put the varnish on, we'll put the decals on once to dry. I'm not sure whether to glue them to the instrument panel first and drill them all out and then fit the decals, which I think I will do. And then if I scratch the paint, then I can always repaint it before we put the decals on or just touch it in afterwards with a wash or something. I don't know. So um, as you can see there, we've got that panel there that's glossed. Ready for the uh, ready for the decals, so um, we're pushing forward. Uh, I wasn't going to do the throttle quadrant because it's sort of not until like stage four in the instructions, but it's part of the air scale set. So I thought I'd get that done, and that's where I've spent most of my time working. Sorry about that, a bit of a coffee fit there, guys. Just another thing I wanted to say. I think we need to be a little bit careful about what's actually painted red. Um, I've noticed in the book that the pictures, there's, there's a picture sort of looking down into this area here and I can see loads of red overspray and it's almost like they've painted all the all the levers and everything red because everything that moves is painted red. All the knobs, dials, buttons, levers, everything. So I'm not really sure that that would be appropriate for the war. So do a bit more research. But as I say, I'm not going to get caught up in it. Um, I think probably these... Like with the throttles, where are we? Where's the throttle? There it is. Um, I think these outer ones here were white, these were black, and they were white. Um, so I think that's how it goes. I've seen a restoration, and these are blue, um, red, and black. I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's a bit tough. I don't know. If, if you know, put it in the comments below because I'm sure I'm going to finish that video, this video, before we get there. So, um, so there we go. So that's a little sort of progress report. And then I will be back. That's, that's dried lovely and hard, but I'm not going to chance it. Because once the decals go down, if, you, if what you're putting the decal onto isn't actually dried solid, hard, your decal will just stick to it. And um, you, you won't get be able to move it at all. So it's best to sort of play on the side, safe side of that. So I'll leave them sort of 12, 18 hours before I put the decals on. And I think I will actually glue these onto the instrument panel. So that one there is going to basically sit on there, I think I've got that upside down, that one's going to sit on there like that so you can see it's a it's a lovely fit now and it's all looking really good so I think what I'll do is fit that on there first, drill it all out and then put the decal on and then it'll just be a case of poking through the holes with a piece of wire or something but um, yeah it'd be a shame wouldn't it to put the decal on there and then glue it and have the glue touch the decal and affect it and wrinkle it up and everything so I think that's what I'll do. As I say, in the instructions, they tell you to build up 
they I see Peter tells you to build up the the panels and then fit them to the instrument panel I think I'll probably do that with this one but not with the others because um, this one doesn't have any drilling going through that main instrument panel part I probably won't add the side piece I don't know we'll get there somehow so um anyway let's uh, let's call that a day for that and I'll see you back in a couple of s oh one more thing Anise also has these T handles which are going to be really handy because as you can see they're all varying different sizes as you can see there and um, I've noticed that on this rear bulkhead I seem to be fascinated with this rear bulkhead there was actually a T handle about here which is clipped on it looks like it you take it out and use it for something um, but they probably don't have it there because it's sticking out to catch the harness or something I don't know but um, so yeah we're gonna put that one in as well but again it looks like it's painted red I mean I even noticed in that museum one this speaker here this is a, this is a speaker for your pilot alerts like low level or climb or whatever um, and they've painted that red I, I just can't see it I've got to try and find some period stuff but um troubles all the period stuff's black and white whatever right let's um let's push on okay so next day again now um <laughs> this is taking some time it's nothing wrong with the set um it's me messing up and I think at the end of this what I'll do is give a suggested sort of path to go down because I've been going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards one of the biggest mistakes I've made is degreasing using cotton buds the raised detail on here the etch detail is so sharp it just picks up every single loose bit of fluff and fibre there is in the cotton buds so if you have used cotton buds or you want to use cotton buds to degrease them what I would suggest is just before they're painted obviously because you just degreased them just flash over the cigarette lighter or something just to burn away any remaining fibres I keep looking I clean I clean them off and then like on this one there there are a couple of fibres down here on this corner and um, I'm not stripping them again I'm, I, I must have painted these about three times now so um, yeah so they're glued on now and I've actually drilled through the holes I don't know if you can see any daylight through there you can there like you can see on that side these holes in here seem to be bigger than these are about 0.4 and these are about 0.5 so I've kept with the size of the hole so that the hole stays central um, purely because I want all my buttons to line up so um, if I use a small drill uh, say I use a 0.4 drill and the, and the shafts on the toggle switch is a 0.4 and I've got the holes going up and down in a zigzag then I won't be any good it's better to have the holes oversized and then manually line up the toggle switches in a row um, but then saying that's gonna be on this sort of angle you know you got to remember you're looking at this like this and oh my god there's a bit of fluff down there but when it's buried down deep down in the cockpit no one's going to see any fluff down in there I can assure you um, the other thing I've got to mention I've sanded this angle here back in real life that actually goes back so I've done that um, so uh, we can see now that when that goes in here we will have a nice looking set of consoles in there which will all look pretty good well, camera focus you can see them there so um yeah i think this is the way to go uh because what i've done is assembled them painted them glued them on and then um drilled them through so now we, we've done all the rough stuff we've used the glue we've used the drill so we can't really damage the decals anymore he says but uh i just seem to be going round and round in circles with this with bloody hairs and fluff and God knows what. So anyway, uh, next bit now, we're going to put the decal on here. I've got this stuck to an MRT, MRP bottle with a bit of blue tack. So basically the process is put that decal on there, then that's going to glue onto there. Um, what I'm tempted to do is put this decal on here, use those holes to align it, let it cure, and then slice down and remove the decal. We're just going to have this stuck to decal. The other thing is we're also going to have that acetate sheet in there, so I'm not really sure how to go about it so I'm going to cut this out using scissors I never use a knife to cut my decals out um, especially if you're cutting up to the edge because you will make a raised I've, I've said this so many times when you cut your decals up to the edge uh, with a knife when you cut them anywhere with a knife what happens is the knife pulls through it pulls up like a plowed field and you end it with an edge if you use scissors you don't you get a nice sharp cut so I'm um, just gonna put this in some warm water just for a minute or so and let that sit there and soak I'm not using any setting solutions to start with um, I may put something on afterwards 
so we can get my uh, set and sole out. Where's my brush gone? Where did it go? There it is. So I may just put some micro set on it after it's gone down. But um, once that's ready to go, we can get it slid into position. And getting the alignment right is, is critical at this point because obviously when we put the the, the, the uh, instrument cover over, obviously that needs to line up lovely with our gauges. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but obviously the better you can get it, the better for you. We've also got decals going on here, here and here. Got one going on there, but I'm not going to fit that until after we've put it on and drilled all the holes and everything. So um, and we've also got, obviously we've got this stencil here, which is going to go on the, the console, which I'm not going to fit yet. And we've got this little switch panel here and we've got the compass there, number five, which I'm not going to fit yet. So what I'm going to do actually now is cut them off. We'll cut those off and we'll put them in, and that one there as well. And we'll put those in our little bag for safekeeping because we're not using them yet. So it's that one there and that one there. We've got our bag of cockpit parts. I keep everything in bags. So we can put those away for safekeeping so we don't lose them. So uh, is that ready? Yep, that's ready to go now. So we can get this over here. I'm just going to get some water on this brush and just brush it on. Okay, so grab some tweezers and we can just literally slide this off onto there. No, again, no setting solutions. We don't want it to just stick down. And we should be able to see, under a magnifier, we should be able to see where those holes are. You can see them coming into light now. So you can see if I pull that over there, those holes disappear. If I pull it back a bit, all of a sudden, there they are. So well, that's how you get everything lined up. So I'm just going to grab a cotton bud. Just go over the top. Just to squeeze out the majority of the liquid. Looking like this deco is actually slightly oversized, which isn't a bad thing. Right, so I'm now going to go off camera and position this. I've got a hole down here to line up and I've got all these holes over here and that will give me my dead position. So I'm going to do that under a magnifier because obviously I'm blind as a bat and I can't see anything. And there we go guys, that's the decals on. As you can see they've still got some solution on them but as you can see on there they're pulling down beautifully. They do pull down really nice. As I said, don't use micro set underneath them on these flat. I mean it's okay to use it on here. When you've got these surfaces that are dead flat, I, I, I wouldn't use it because they tend to just go down. They're just like border model decals. They just suck down straight away and it's very difficult to move them around. If you just use water like I did, you can see they still pull down. I mean, you can see the, the orange peel in the paint under there. So um, there we go. Um, another little tip. Um, very strangely how things have worked out. Um, I was looking at a... Uh, a magazine and it talked about applying decals um, to bare plastic surfaces and it said always paint don't just clear coat can't see the difference then I saw a video um, a guy building a model of a, a gota and he just clear coated the wings in preparation for the decals and he had a nightmare with them so I don't know um, so don't just clear coat it paint it gloss black as Peter instructs and then they'll go down they'll go down lovely um, I said just now I was going to trim down the acetate sheet. I'd already done that. If you remember, I said before I cut the acetate sheet to this panel rather than to this panel. So um, we don't have the acetate sheet going under this little bit here. So we'll have a. We'll, what I'll do is once it's dry, I'll probably scrape away some of the decal from there and glue that direct to the metal work that's behind it, rather than have have that just glued to a decal. Um, 
So basically that is that. So you, you've got your options. You can build this up like this. You can build everything up like this and then stick it on with some super glue. Or you can do what I've done here and glue the panels to the, the green painted plastic and then apply the decals afterwards. The advantage of doing it this way is if you do slip with the drill and damage the paintwork, you can cover it with the decal. Whereas if you drill through afterwards for your wire or whatever and you slip, you're going to ruin your decal. So there you go. The downside is it's difficult to line the decal up with the metal part because you can't see through. A few of the holes I've drilled have come through, so I put a torch behind and then I was able to line them up. But um, you want the holes to be pretty well lined up because um, obviously when you put your toggle switches in, whether you use the Anise toggle switches or whether you use just bits of wire. If you want to see how it looks as a comparison, go back. I've done an air scale build in two or three parts of the Lancaster set and I used wire. Um, I think the wire I used was probably a little too fine, but I don't think it looked as good as, as these do. So uh, we'll see how these look. Well, what we'll do is, that's why I've got everything pre-drilled. We'll paint those on the, on the fret and then we'll just cut them off, pop them in. So that's what we'll do. Um, so we'll leave that to dry now, uh, leave all this to dry and then we'll cut away that deck, we'll get that glued on, get it lined up and then we've got a deck to go on there. So then what I'll do is I'll come back when we're ready um, to start sort of building up more. Uh, as I say, we've still got these panels here, we've got the compass here and we've got the, the little switch panel that goes on the, uh, on the port side there. Uh, I'm not doing them right now because although they're part of the air scale set, I'm not fitting them into the, the cockpit yet. Um, and also I need to sort of adjust them probably because the instrument panel has been moved back. And then we've got this panel here which is going to go on. And as you can see that's going to sit over that decal. And we will have our gauges underneath. Like so. With a sheet of acetate in between. So we're uh, very happy with that. That's going to look lovely. Uh, the other thing I need to do is when... When the um, when the decal is completely dry, like after 24 hours or something, I'm just going to go around and take away these edges because you can see the decal is made slightly larger than the metal panel. So just take away those edges and then when we come to glue it, we won't have a problem. So, uh, right, I'm going to call it a day there because, let's say this has gone on for about 40 minutes now, I think, maybe even 50 minutes, probably 40 minutes. Um, and I need to wait for stuff to dry. And as this is like the third day of filming on this one now. So I'm going to wait another day now before we carry on and do anything more. But um, I think we're going to be looking at sort of getting all this on and then clear coating it. And then, um, well, obviously I'm not going to clear coat the instrument panel. But I want to get all this clear coated just to seal it in. And I'll clear coat that as well. So what we'll probably do is, what we'll probably do is get that down on here. Get the decal on it. Let it dry. Clear coat it. See how it looks. And if it's shiny enough, we'll just put the instrument panel on that. If not, we'll use the acetate. We'll probably use the acetate anyway because it really does look like glass because it's dead flat and shiny. So I'll see you all for part three. Uh, sorry, part four B. Any questions, pop them down below. Um, whenever I do these, I, I know I kind of, these air scale sets, I kind of complicate, thing, compl complicate things because I always mess things up. It's a lot easier than, than you think. Um, it's not difficult at all uh, but in hindsight if I did another one now I would get all the parts off the fret before painting um, and then just go just do what I've done here really get these glued on drill the holes get the decal well, get them painted get them glued on drill the holes get the decals on and then we'll go from there so thank you for watching I'll see you all soon and I hope you've enjoyed the the comments I've made about the instrument panel. I've got a feeling, thinking about this a lot more, um, I've got a feeling what's happened is the whole cockpit somehow has been slightly overscaled from this bulkhead forward. So therefore everything here is progressively further forward. It's like we, we could do with moving this back. I mean, it's like the bottom of the seat is slightly longer than the air scale one. Um, the distance of this in comparison to the window is slightly longer than the instrument panel is slightly. It's like everything's just been stretched out slightly, you know, um, like it's 30th scale instead of 32nd scale, which happens if drawings are used and stuff. So it could all do with squashing up. You could do with cutting a, cutting a bit out of here, 
you know, cut a bit out of the floor there and move that back a bit, cut a bit out of the floor there and move the pedals back a bit, move the edge, move everything back progressively towards its bulkhead and I think it would all be perfect. But as it is, I think it looks absolutely fine. Um, in fact, the way the kit is, if you look at the, the way it's designed, you probably wouldn't be able to pull the column back because the seat is so close to the column. So, um, and what I've done with this one, I've actually taken some plastic off the column so it can sit vertically, whereas in the kit it sits sort of facing forward. So um, that's my basic assumption. Um, as far as rivet counting goes, I'm done with that now on this cockpit. I'm just going to build it as I see fit. Obviously check some colours because we're seeing lots of reds, as I said. We're seeing lots of red colour in that it's restored cockpit. I'm not sure that's correct. Anyway, um, I'm still not even sure about the red or the white placard on the left-hand side. You know, the one that sits here. I'm not sure which is correct, which is right or wrong. But I'm going to go for the red in the airscale set on this one because it's pretty, isn't it? So I'll see you all soon and um, take care and uh, come back for part 4B. Bye for now.